I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us. And we have today a delightful young lady, Emily Briggs, and I appreciate her coming and sharing her story with us. Of course. And it's, it's really fantastic, and we're going to interview her husband for next time, mm -hmm. so this will be exciting. So Thanks for having us. Oh, great. So, uh, as we kind of do, where are you from? Where do you hail from? Where, mm -hmm. where were you born and all that stuff? I was born um, in the San Francisco Bay Area oh, you and were. raised there for the first 13 years. Oh, okay. Uh, my dad was a bishop. We were oh. very involved in the LDS Church okay. as I was growing up. All of our social occasions were, were all, with the ward, all LDS, with the stake. Huh? Was this yeah. generational? Had your parents been? Do you, who was the I convert have, to the church? What, how far back? Both my parents were born and raised, born in the covenant in the church. And, okay. and raised. Um, but they each have a parent who has a long history with the oh. LDS church. In okay. fact, my, my grandmother's grandpa has been spoken of from the pulpit at General Conference before. Oh, so we have quoted. deep roots yeah. in the pioneer heritage. Um, but then I have one grandparent on each side who is a convert. Okay. So. Well, that's interesting. So mm -hmm. your dad was a bishop. He's and a bishop. Mm -hmm. Lots of callings, I guess, throughout your mm -hmm. childhood. How many brothers and sisters do you have? I'm the third of seven. Oh, wow. And I have okay. a twin sister. So we have, there were four girls and then three boys. And all of us were born in the Bay Area. Okay. And then my dad took a job in um, in Utah when I was just before I started eighth grade. Oh, was that tough on you? It was hard. It was a hard. Yeah. It was a hard transition. It was. It was unique because our our culture in California was so. Um, we were very peculiar. We were that peculiar people that we like to consider oh, ourselves yeah. as LDS. And um, moving to Utah, all of a sudden, everyone on our street was goes Mormon. to church with us, <laughs> and oh, they're all going to. It was a little different. Everybody with, at school. Mm -hmm, was everyone's Mormon. LDS, and it was. Yeah. It, I don't know. It was it was a tough transition. Interesting. Maybe makes us a little lazy and complacent. Do you think? Because <laughs> I've think so. you know you almost hear that once in a while. The mission field's a little more. Uh, it makes you stay on your different. toes a little bit. Yeah. Maybe you have to fight for what you believe in a little bit more. Yeah. But if everyone else is doing the right thing, why should I? <laughs> <laughs> well, I but uh, never got in any trouble or anything. Yeah. We just but we made that transition in 1988. Okay. Uh, my parents still live in the same house in Sandy. Oh, do they? And I went to um, high school at. Alta and oh, did. Okay. graduated seminary. I did, oh, did you? all the right things. Never any question that the church was true, I guess. You no, had, no, yeah. I never, um, I wouldn't say that I was a critical thinker. Yeah. I was, um, I was a feeler. Yeah. I like to feel my testimony. Sure. And Don't, didn't we all though? I mean, that mm -hmm. was what the whole fast and testimony meetings were oh, about. Sure. And, and if you don't have a testimony, <laughs> bear it anyway. Yeah. That, <laughs> and it'll be, so will be confirmed. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So after high school, what happens? Um, after high school, I went to um, I went away to college with my sister because mm. we were the twin sister. My twin sister. Okay. We were just kind of a, a pair at, that were inseparable, and so we went to um, school in Cedar City for yeah. a couple of years, and then um, moved back home. And I transferred to the University of Utah, and she got married. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and. Um, I met my first husband that, that fall right before she got married Okay. and she was marrying the temple and uh, of the four sisters, she, I'm number three and she's number four. Yeah. She got married first and then I got married four months later uh -huh. and then it went up the line. So the oldest got married <laughs> last. Um, but, um, met my first husband in the, in the young adult ward and you went that route huh? through the, yeah. Young adults. Pretty and, typical. Yeah. Pretty typical. I think three of the four of us met our husbands in the young adult ward. Yeah. And, uh, Were you taking Institute too? Did you take I, that? Uh, I did take Institute, but not... In Cedar City, I mean. Or, but not for 
not for a purpose. To, I don't. Do they even graduate from institute? You know, that's a good question. <laughs> I was just thinking that myself. I took a few classes mm -hmm. at institute, but I never even thought of graduating or, right. or doing anything more than just well, okay, I'll take classes. I did. But. I did take maybe one or two. It, I wasn't serious about it. Yeah. And in fact, I would say because I was so good through all of my <laughs> high school experiences and everything. As soon as I moved away from home, there, was, there were a couple of things that I decided I wasn't gonna do anymore, and one of them was gonna clean my bathroom. <laughs> and I didn't. So, um, and one of them was I wanted to choose for myself if I was gonna go to church. And so I experimented and just stayed home from church a couple times, a couple few and maybe. how'd that feel? Um, very rebellious. Yeah. <laughs> and I and I got my ears double pierced that first year at, at college. <laughs> and looking back, of course, I think it was just um, I was just always so obedient. Yeah. And I think I just wanted a little a little so, so little way I, to rebel. Yeah. He, in a healthy now way. That, that you're an adult or yeah. something. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> yeah. So. Again, when you say you're not critical thinking. I don't think that should be taken as demeaning because mm -hmm. I don't think, even though I read all the books and everything, and you probably did a lot of study too in seminary and mm -hmm. everything, but you don't really, I don't know why why we don't critically think, but we, mm -hmm. we do think, sure. but we're not. I, I, was, I, I, was, I was definitely thinking about what I was learning, Yeah. And um, but I wasn't, there was no question of, is this not true? Yeah, it is was this, just... It, it was just, it was a it was just like given. confirmation bias Yeah. that of course this is true. And how do I, how do I come to the conclusion with everybody else around me yeah. that this is true, that this is real? Yeah. Anything happen at the temple when you went through that the first time? Um, it was weird. Yeah. Um, my, my three sisters had already all gone through the temple Two uh, my two older sisters had gone on missions, so they were endowed. <clears throat> and my twin was um, already married in the temple, so uh, they all prepped me. So you could go through and be in the room. You couldn't. Could you be in the room while you had a temple recommend? Were you able to go into the room when they got married? With my twin sister, no. No. Because I was not yet endowed. Oh. So she got married without me, <laughs> without my presence. But oh. my older sisters were there for her wedding, yeah. and then my. Um, but for my wedding, all three of my sisters could be there. Sure. And so and. My um, first husband had not gone on a mission, but we went, um, so we went to the temple together for our endowments a couple of days before our sealing, and yeah. um, I just, I did everything I was supposed to do. And my, my first husband and I were, we were active. Um, mm -hmm. we, we did what we were supposed to do. We had, um, we had war callings and yeah. um, started having babies and isn't that just amazing when you kind of think? So you just, I mean, the Book of Mormon is just true, right? Yes. And Joseph Smith's a prophet. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. And I, I, I wouldn't even say that I had a testimony of Joseph Smith until, um, gosh, probably only about five years before my disaffection. I just accepted it, but I had never gained a, a personal um, witness. Yeah. And that's an interesting story, if I can share that real sure, quick. Sure, please. Sure, um, please. Because the Book of Mormon, I, I feel like I had that happened through probably my, my high school experience. I'd read it, you know, several times over, yeah. and and um, and just had gained that that testimony. And for when it comes to Joseph Smith, I had um, I taught Relief Society. I would actually kind of campaign <laughs> for that calling, no matter which word, because um, it was my favorite. You enjoyed the teaching the Relief I, Society, the sisters. I did, that. and I loved making them cry at the end. Oh, did you? <laughs> that was, Give them that emotional punch. For and, sure. Well, because then when you bear your testimony kind of thing or yeah. just to I, I would share a story at the end that would bring about the tears and oh, yes, then I you knew you were it. really <laughs> successful yes <laughs> oh, so funny. um i was preparing this lesson about about um joseph smith and how everything hinges on on his his story if it was if it was real or not sure everything hinges on that sure, yeah. and i was um visiting with my one of my older sisters and we had little kids and her little boy um, as, as she's talking about this, she's talking about her mission experience and how um, every time on her mission, when she, um, when the subject of Joseph Smith would come up to explain to these investigators yeah. um, w the purpose of the, of the prophet. Trying and, to get ready to bear mm -hmm, a testimony. Mm -hmm. okay. There would be an interruption. And her perspective was that uh, the adversary was going to Satan disrupt that. that happen. <laughs> and okay. just as she's sharing this with me, her son starts to choke. On something and Two so steps. we were interrupted and oh. because of that experience I thought oh, 
the truth. He really is a true prophet. <laughs> wow. So, That's amazing. So I gained this this testimony just it, later in life. I was probably in my early 30s when wow. I when I gained this testimony. <laughs> so, and now it you know it's That's sealed funny. and approved, and yeah. I've, I've, I'm the whole package, now ladies and got, gentlemen. I, I have even, a, you've even got Joseph Smith in there. I've got, yeah. yeah. Now I have a testimony of him as well. Yeah. So, and you were teaching your kids and, of course, mm -hmm. active and bringing Very much. them along and stuff. Oh, Book of Mormon study every morning for, for breakfast, and then we'd talk about it on the on the way to school and really? how do we apply this to to our <sighs> lives. and Just a sweet little Mormon family. For sure. So what happens next? What kind of happens? You know, the, the marriage ended, yeah. and I didn't see it coming. Um, it, was, it was a heartbreak. It was tragic. Um, and it's interesting because... Uh, Doctrine and Covenants 8210 was probably lifeblood to me at the time. I, the Lord, am bound, bound when you do, when you what, do I what I say. say. And so I said, well, what does is, what is Heavenly Father tell us to so do? this was kind of a disappointment then, huh? No, oh. no, listen, because oh. <laughs> I started to do all the things. I started with my checklist. I did my visiting teaching. I went to the temple. I did all these things. Now, the, the marriage still ended. Yeah. But what happened afterwards in the, the, the help that came um, through a job for me, through um, our housing situation. Uh, some people in my ward bought my house oh, and let my children and me stay for, for free. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Until I got remarried. And, um, and so, you know, of course, in the, in the meantime, it was, it was devastating and it was hard and I, sure. I, I couldn't see the forest for the trees. It was just <laughs> overwhelming and, and a heartbreak. And um, a lot of people praying for me, but I was going to the temple every Friday, every single Friday. I'd go um, to uh, at least initiatories yeah. and, um, or ceilings. And right. I would just, uh, just, I was always at the temple every single Friday. And, um, and I just stayed faithful to the works. Mm. And, um, and eventually the blessing started to come, which proved that I had God on some puppet strings. Yeah. That you so, really had, had, had him bound. When he you really was bound. You, yeah. Yeah. So I, um, so that was, um, I met my, my new husband and we got married. We, we had this blending situation. I had three children. He had four. Um, oh. and we just, and it was just like, it was kind of a fairy tale, you know, just everyone was just, oh, you're so blessed because you were so righteous. Um, look at this outcome. It's so wonderful. So it, it kind of solidified my belief in the works sure. that I could, that I could somehow control <laughs> the God of Mormonism. And I was, um, I was just on this pedestal and that's, um, I, I would say that probably the pit is an easier place. To, for the Lord to start working on someone. I, yeah. But this pedestal but was... But you felt, felt like you were just doing I was, everything right. I, I mean, I was... So, during the process of my divorce, I mean, I was, I was ready to be twinkled any time now <laughs> because I was so righteous. I, I was done. doing all the things that I was supposed to do. I read the Book of Mormon like three times in, yeah. in an 18-month period. And um, sometimes I attended the temple twice a week because oh I just was really trying to manipulate the, the outcome to... The more you could do, the more God would love you. Yeah. Right. And bless me. Yeah, and bless you. So that's that that pride on a pedestal was where um, I was situated when when it came apart. And what happened <clears throat> there to to have that happen? Well, my um, my husband and I um, decided that we well he decided <laughs> I'll give him the credit he decided that we needed to study the Old Testament as a family and. Um, that's an unusual move, isn't it, kind of? Yeah, because we had started with the New Testament, actually. We were in the Gospels. Yeah. And then he said, somehow, in some way, in his, um, in his leadership for our family, he just, and I trusted him. He was my Peter Priesthood. You know, I just, um, he said, I, I, I feel that we need to go to. you in the temple, too. We were, right? we were married civilly, initially, oh. just because of timing. Um, for, and we just, our, the stake president actually um, encouraged us to just get married in, it would, yeah. it was May actually in 2010. Sure. Um, he said, just get to the business of blending your family. Yeah. Don't, don't wait and just get, just get that underway. And then we were sealed October of the next year. Oh, okay. And I was, um, I was 12 weeks pregnant with our, our first baby together. We had uh, three together. Yeah. I was 12 weeks pregnant when we went through the temple. So we were sealed. Wow. Um, so, oh, and I should probably mention that um, 
during about the time of the divorce, I got involved in um, energy work. Um, mm. I went to um, a, a class down in Utah County um, that provides training for emotional release therapy. And that was huge for my divorce recovery oh, well, to understand it? what I was going through, to separate what was my responsibility, what was his. Um, and I, I, I think that that and some secular counseling with my, with my ex-husband um, just really helped us move along and, and have an amicable divorce yeah, relationship. And we have, we continue that to this day. Well, um, yeah. But the energy work was, um, was also, it was very appealing. It, it worked well with Mormonism. I didn't understand at the time, I do now, <laughs> why that is. Um, so I was, I was heavily involved in, I would, I would call it witchcraft. <laughs> um, and, and using, you know, muscle testing and all these things, just um, really thinking that I had this power and this control and I was wielding it. And, but, right. but of course I'm going to be a God someday. It makes well, yeah, sense. That's true. Aren't we? I mean, that's the whole goal of Mormonism right. is to become gods. And yeah. so you felt like you were on your way, yeah. I'm on your way. Yeah. So, um, and that was, that was a little weird for my family yeah. and my mom was concerned about that, about that. But, um, but through the divorce, as they saw my temple attendance and all that, they, my parents even said, so we were a little worried about you. But um, since you're going, to the, temple, you're going to the temple and doing temple everything and, else, you're, yeah. you're going to be okay. And I feel like they kind of put their stamp of, of, of approval on me. Yeah. So anyway, so the way we started to, I started to come away from Mormonism is um, through the energy work that, yeah. through the class that I took for a year, um, I, there was a, a young lady in the class whose husband was actually our teacher and she had had this home birth experience. And I was very curious about home birth, and sure. I had had some negative experiences with my um, first, probably my my second baby was really a difficult mm -hmm. hospital birth, and and so I started to dive into, and this is interesting because it doesn't really matter, <laughs> it's just that God used it. Uh, um, so I went through this experience of you know diving into you know medicine in this country and birth rates and. Um, you know, I don't know, epidurals, whatever. I was going through this really interesting phase of um, how do I have the best birthing experience and yeah. get this baby here with no emotional scarring. <laughs> so um, I, as I was diving into all that, my husband was going through his understanding of, it was starting to come apart for him. And he was trying to figure out how very delicately to present to me that there we've got problems in the, in, church. In the church. In the church history or mm -hmm. doctrine. Is that why he recommended the Old Testament then to study? You know, you'd have to ask him. Okay. Um, I think that there's, um, I, I don't know for sure. You'd have to ask well, him. What came of the study that okay. you were telling us? So um, I was pregnant and had the new baby in this time frame that we started into the tabernacle, a study of the tabernacle. And my husband, in his, in his wisdom, ordered us a, a two scale. So, you know, version a of a replica, really, of and we have it sitting on the piano at home, oh, really? and so we have this this replica so that we can understand what we're reading about. Yeah. And my husband took his time, absolutely took his time um, going into the study because I remember I was pregnant, and then I had a newborn, and so I wasn't always part of of scripture study at, at dinner time yeah. because I was kind of busy or uncomfortable or whatever, yeah. and. Um, and it just started to dawn on me that this has nothing to do with the temple. And I knew the temple. I mean, I knew the well, temple so well. so well. So often. Yeah. I would correct the sweet old ladies <laughs> who forgot their line. <laughs> and I would feed them their line because I knew. I knew it inside and out. So um, I started to realize this has that nothing to difference. do. Yeah. yeah. So not only does the, the is that not what... The temple is the tabernacle is not what we see what we do in the temple right. but i started to see what the tabernacle was and it was directly pointing to the cross and it just it was just this slow dawning of really truth wow. and so and i but i my immediate excuse was well we have more information now than we did then oh. and so i can put that on the shelf because joseph smith had he got more so I don't. I, I can put that on the shelf because <laughs> there's a disparity for sure. But I can I can just put that on the shelf because modern day prophets will trump everything, which is interesting because I gave a, a, a Relief Society lesson on modern day prophets and I was so uncomfortable with it. 
Well, you said in when you talked earlier to me about the prophet could even reveal and, and supersede Jesus. Yes, and I taught that. <laughs> uh, so uncomfortable that I, I, I was you uncomfortable, felt uncomfortable as it, saying it. But it was in it was, it was in the in lesson. lesson. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of leaving that out and going my own direction, I was obedient. <laughs> wow! And I taught the lesson as it was as it was put forward. So um, anyway, so the so it started to. Um, so I had this understanding. I started to gain this understanding that maybe there, there's obviously something here in the in the tabernacle that's that we're kind of missing out here yeah. in Mormonism. Yeah. So then my husband starts to ex, starts to come to me, and and because of my experience with the the home birth and and just seeing things maybe as conspiracy, mm-hmm. my husband starts to come to me and said, you know, starts saying we've got some troubles with the corporation. You know that the LDS Church is a corporation, right? I'm like. It is. <laughs> so he starts to explain to me what um, that we've got some problems in with the corporation, and I remember very specifically. I and it was when I was still pregnant. Um, he, I remember him, I was sitting on my bed, and he was standing at the foot of the bed, starting to explain to me some of the problems with the corporation, and my immediate and heartbreaking reaction in my mind was, "Oh no, not again." I divorced the last guy <laughs> because he couldn't get me to the celestial kingdom. You know, I mean, there's lots of other yeah. baggage, but, yeah, right, right. but ultimately, I need to get to the celestial kingdom. I need kingdom my Peter him. priesthood. And this guy's, yeah. And I was, thought, oh, what do I do now? We're going to have a baby. We've got all these kids depending on us. Yeah. This is going to be number eight total. Wow. And, um, and he, he was very patient and he, I, I could tell he, he would only give me what I could, what I could handle in the moment. That was wise. He <laughs> was wise. And a little and bit at a time. A little bit, yeah. And you started seeing things. And... Yeah. So he um, over in the, so I had our son um, April 2012. Um, by the end of 2012, I was pregnant again, mm. and we knew that we wanted. I mean, no one's getting any younger. We wanted to get our family here, and uh, we needed to yeah. do it very quickly. And yeah. so our um, so then I was pregnant again. Um, and my husband, in the meantime, had asked me to read Rough Stone Rolling. And he said, you know, you've got your older sons. Um, you want them to go on missions, I'm sure. I, of course I did. Um, you probably will want to inoculate them against some of the issues in church history. And so, um, so he, was, he was really being very delicate, you know, just, just trying to... Um, did you realize he had gone as far as he had? Or was he being gentle with you? He was being very gentle. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that... Um, I, he is very, um, very critically thinking and just does not make any sudden moves. He's yeah, very deliberate. Very sp- that was one very of the first wise. things I noticed about him. So what did Rough Stone Rolling and you read some other books as well, I right? I did. I did. Yeah. I started with Rough Stone Rolling, but because I had these little babies, I just, I couldn't get through it without falling asleep. So I, <laughs> um, and, and then, so I'm starting to realize that there are problems with the corporation. There are definitely problems with in modern, maybe in modern day Mormonism. So let's go upstream. So um, I started to watch Sister Wives. I ordered their book. Yeah. I thought maybe we're in the wrong tangent. Maybe the, that they've got truth back there. Um, it was only appealing because I had these little babies, and it sure would be nice to have another adult around <laughs> no. to to help me out, so I could go grocery shopping. Um, so, That's but that <laughs> it very it quickly fell apart. Uh, very that that ideology and fundamentalism it very quickly fell well, apart. Emily- our time is just absolutely flying by, okay. and I, I just, I guess, I want you to, if you would, share now, kind of that final, more transition yeah. into Jesus and the Bible yeah. and what. Uh, well, the, after I had the baby, after yeah. I had the baby in 2013, I, um, I, I took it very seriously. I started to read. Um, the next year, in 2014, my husband did a series of family home evening lessons on the fruit of wolves. And we were reading in the New Testament um, that the, the Jesus says repeatedly, watch out. And the, um, by their fruit. And mm-hmm. and the, yeah. yeah. And so we did that study, and it was probably about the fourth lesson. Because um, all of these lessons, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, I know. These poor people are so deceived. <laughs> <laughs> and just all of a sudden, the Spirit just broke through. And, and it was just this realization, you are deceived. These are, these are wolves in sheep's clothing. So um, I... I very quickly in June of 2014 um, bolted. I was at Mormon Church June 17th for my son's teacher ordination. And that, um, 
right after sacrament meeting for nine o'clock church and yeah. then went home and changed. I was at Christian church by 11 and that was it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I never went back. Um, started reading so the Bible. Did, did you have a born again experience? Definitely. That? Definitely. Yeah. That summer, um, just, uh, one night could not fall asleep middle yeah. of July. Yeah. Couldn't fall asleep. Just got up and started to pray. Um, just said, Lord, I'm, I'm grieved that I'm so sinful. I'm, I, you never understood that I as didn't. a Mormon, did you? No. no. I was so righteous yeah. and just waiting to be twinkled. <laughs> so um, it was just this realization of how wretched I was. Yeah. And so, and it was probably another two years before I really, I mean, it was the Lord and all of His wisdom just really yeah. um, walked me through. Well, and not only wretched and sinful, but that we have a Savior. Yeah. A Jesus that, that paid for our sins, right? Yeah. And, and I think Romans 8.1 was probably the first realization that, that he says that there is now no condemnation for the, those who are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. There's no condemnation. And so that just that changed my whole perspective. And, um, and then as soon as I started to take it seriously, because we had one more baby, yeah. and on her dedication day, May 15th, 2016, I dedicated myself again to the Lord. I just said, I, I need truth. I was so overwhelmed with the differences and yeah. how do I undo Mormonism? How do, is this even true? Is this even true? Yeah. You know, and my husband had, had worked so deliberately to give us all a safety net yeah. of, of the truth of the Bible. Yeah. So definitely. You've been a, reading the Bible then? For sure. Yeah. I get involved that? in Bible studies every chance I can. Um, I just. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. And had we even, had you read the Bible at all as, as LDS? And snippets. In seminary? Just, just little just snippets. Just enough to use it in yeah. Reduced Society lessons, sure. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, so what happened the first time you went to a Christian church then? Oh, it was just, um, I, I, it was overwhelming that the Spirit was there. Yeah. And I, I thought, wow, there's, there's no monopoly of the Spirit in Mormonism. You know, one thing you mentioned <clears throat> really quickly, and we've only got a minute left, mm -hmm. but you had a friend, a Christian yeah. friend. You turned to her yeah. because she, you knew you could count on her or trust her. To... She was the only Christian I knew. Yeah. And she was in my former ward with my um, first husband before... Uh, when I got divorced, you know that. Was and she a big help? She was. She was wonderful. I just had lunch with her last week, and she just loves the Lord. Yeah. And there was there there was just something about her that I knew I could go to her and trust her, and she helped me get into a Christian church and, and not judgmental. Or, no, just loving, yeah. just absolutely loving. Well, gosh, there's so much we could talk about your family, and uh, I guess uh, yeah. Eric will help fill in a few of the gaps. But probably you, you're just delightful. And, Thank you. And you've. Uh, you're busy going to an Eagle Mountain church mm -hmm. now. Go to Redemption Hill in Eagle yeah. Mountain, and Steve Pearson is the lead pastor there, and he's just wonderful. Just loves the Lord, and Isn't it, and you praise Jesus, and oh, absolutely. You know. yeah. Well, Emily, thank you. It's gone so fast. Yeah. I appreciate I you. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>